Let's speak to Dr. Bob Arnott. He's a medical doctor and also the former chief medical correspondent at NBC News. He joins us now on Skype from Vermont. Dr. Arnott, let me start with a question that everyone is speculating about. When are we likely to have a vaccine and enough of it produced to end this pandemic? It's quite the process. It really is. You know, right now they are already scaling up the production of some vaccines that they believe are promising so that should these phase one, phase two trials work, there'd be a real opportunity to, to have a vaccine. They've said from the outset it's 12 to 18 months. Right now, Nastasia, I'm putting most of my hope on current drugs. For instance, in ICUs now, they're using these IL-6R receptor blockers. It's, it's a mouthful there, but this cytokine storm it seems to kill so many people. They have a variety of different drugs they're looking there. Remdesivir is another one, an antiviral drug. So I think, unfortunately, these vaccines really are a year to a year and a half away, unless there's some kind of great miracle. Lots of scale up, lots of ability to produce it, but you have to show it's safe and you have to show it's effective. Well, let me ask you then about safety. I, I see Oxford University is starting human trials of their vaccine this week. And I know there's been speculation in the scientific community about possible ways to try to speed up testing, but surely there are ethical implications there. Well, you know, we always say medicine first do no harm. Uh, and there have been vaccines in the past that have done harm that have uh, caused infections. You have two different kinds. You have what we call a live attenuated vaccine, which means it's actually the virus, but it is not uh, supposed to cause a lot of illness. Uh, that caused a, a lot of concern back in the polio mm. era. And then there's a matter of taking, you know, particular antigens, you know, parts of the dangerous parts of the virus and creating an antibody to it. Now, right now, we have this technique where we take the antibodies from people who were ill and transfuse those into people who are currently ill. So that's, uh, that's working almost like an active vaccine. But um, it's, it's a ways off. I would say, Nastas, you know, it's very interesting with this WHO meeting today because, uh, you know, they fell on their face during the Ebola epidemic that we covered with you on Al Jazeera in uh, West Africa. It was a catastrophe. And there's a lot of blame, more than enough to go around. Certainly, uh, China has blame for not having informed the world early enough. The World Health Organization for saying that it wasn't transmitted person to person, uh, for not encouraging uh, flight bans earlier. Mm. And the United States, you know, we had months to prepare for this. And, you know, we're still short of the right kinds of uh, tests and whatnot. So I think, unfortunately, there's some politics involved here in that uh, the president doesn't seem to like the World Health Organization, and they're, they're taking a fall for this. But it would be a great tragedy if the United States didn't contribute money to the WHO, mm. because the African health system is so fragile. And the WHO supports so much so that I would hate to see that we really, you know, don't pay up over time. But let me assure you this, though, that, you know, Deborah Burks, uh, who's part of the White House uh, team here, uh, is on the phone daily with people all around the world, both in terms of helping countries in, in African and Asian, as an mm -hmm. example, and in trying to coordinate this effort. Our FDA here and, of course, uh, Tony Fauci are, again, on daily phone calls with pharmaceutical companies around the world. So I would just uh, assure you that there really is active coordination between the National Institutes of Health, the FDA, and the White House task force uh, and drug and vaccine developers all over the world, as we saw in that story tonight. Uh, but, of course, some, some bad blood here, unfortunately, sure. at just the wrong time between the U.S. administration and the World Health Organization. Well, we are seeing this unprecedented cooperation within the scientific community in the hunt for a vaccine. But surely there's also a bit of competition as to who might find one first. And I imagine that would have implications for who actually gets access to it before others. So how can poorer countries be sure that they'll get the access they need when they need it? <sighs> Well, Nastasia, that's the great tragedy here is, I mean, like poorer countries, the first thing they're going to need are ventilators. Some countries, like Kenya, might have four or five ventilators. I mean, you need ventilators, you need protective gear, all of the things the United States has been scrambling to get, mm -hmm. and that China began to scramble to get in early January, you know, unfortunately, you're going to be tragically short in so much of Africa. Once these uh, medications and vaccines are produced in mass quantities, you know, usually the pharmaceutical companies are pretty good about getting them to those various countries. But as you point out, there's a mad worldwide competition. Now, companies and governments are sharing much more than they than they used to or ordinarily would. But clearly, uh, certain companies would want to be the winner, and they're scrambling hard to get a vaccine. When I was little, we had polio. 
And, you know, one morning you'd wake up and there'd be somebody to be playing ball with in a football field. And that afternoon or evening, they'd be in an iron lung. Uh, and we waited with bated breath. We were really quite fearful for our lives uh, for a vaccine then. And then when it came with uh, with uh, Jonas Salk and with, uh, with uh, Sabin, uh, of course, it was like the greatest relief, the greatest miracle of all time. So I have great hopes, but I really think that the therapeutics will pay off first in the vaccines probably are a whole year away. And still very limited resources there on both counts. Dr. Bob very Arnott, limited. a medical doctor and former chief medical correspondent at NBC News. Thanks for joining us on Al Jazeera. Welcome.